I forget. Did I already go over all of this? What I my my full list at the beginning? I think I did. You did. All right. So, you know, we saw this Sphere four two seven zero Weiyun, a bunch of crew. Uh, Martok on the app next, bringing some extra some extra crew along. And a little cloaked mine, some faked messages, some cool stuff. This Why no build. Borg missile? What? Why no Borg missile? Why no Borg missile? All right. Here is my long and complicated answer to why no Borg missile. I don't think I need it. With all of the things that my ships can do, I think Borg missile would be redundant for what I want to do with it. Uh, while it would be nice to give a Voyager five power tokens, um, I don't think there was any combination on Voyager that was enough of a threat that required me to deal that many Ox tokens that didn't already have a way of canceling the attack to begin with. To make up for that, I pulled in the Cloaked Mines, which could do a little bit of extra damage that I might need to things crossing over, and because cloak mines are just super strong. And anything that uh, they get around Weyun, because they're not an attack, they, uh, they hurt swarms. Not that I thought I was going to face them, but having that extra little bit of utility could have definitely saved, might have definitely saved me in case of, in case I did run into that four Klingon list that happened, that happened over at San Diego. So, my answer is I replaced them with cloaked mines. How do you feel about this? Is my answer sufficient for you? Yeah, all right. I guess I buy it. <laughs> I mean, it just seems it seems like if you're willing to pay the point premium, it just solves a lot of problems really easily. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And granted, easy is nice. But the question is, is it necessary? And I wanted to expand the number of fleets I would be good against rather than focus on a match that I was pretty sure I could win already anyway. Uh, just winning it faster. Because I'm trying to think, what kind of build would I really need the Borg missile against? And I guess maybe the Picard Ducat double sphere? Yeah, but it looks like there weren't any of those I mean, at least in contention at either of the two events we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But even then, you know, my sphere is still negating one of their attacks every turn. So it's basically sphere with an extra action from Martok versus one other sphere until I kill it. And, and yeah, just one other sphere until I kill it. And I think that still works out vaguely in my favor, especially since I can get one or two extra free negations out of Veril. Thanks thanks to thanks to Goval and Lee Nallis. Yeah, seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. Indeed. David, what do you think of my build? Do you like it? Is it pretty? Well, I, I can't argue with the results. I, I like it. I, I like what you're doing with it. I, I think you've got a lot of protection on things. I think you can do a lot with it and and like you said, I mean, the, the Weyun Croesus lets you basically take whatever you want. All of your stuff is mine now. Yeah. I like it. All your base are belong to us. <laughs> and the funny I mean, thing is, I never did end up using fake messages because I was expecting to find, you know, the, uh, the Portland build around here at some point. But I never ran into it. Hmm. Yeah, so that would be a that would be a just in case thing. It, 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 it better to run it than to try running some kind of tech like Nyota Uhura to uh, try to get around that one card, which I did discover that she does do in some of the uh, side events over the weekend. It was kind of amusing, but um. Yeah. Any other any other questions about my build? Let's see. Admiral Pendragon. So multiple Borg missile is the answer to Weyun Verald? Yes or no? 
Seems pretty darn effective. You know, I would say, I would say, if anything we've seen over the past couple of weeks really looks like an answer to Wayne Vero, I'd say it's actually double sphere, double tactor on Borg missile, but double sphere, double missile should work in a pinch. Now, going beyond this point, what about a sphere and a scout cube with both with missiles, and then you could still have your captains. I would have to put feedback pulse on the scout cube to make sure it survived long enough mm -hmm. to use the uh, missile. And that's fine because scout cube has a lot of green maneuvers, but. Oh. Do, 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 do is the answer to Wayne Verrill? Well, I mean, for why you'd want to run it. I'm sure that was a question, but I, I cannot wrap my head around it right now because I am going on a little bit less sleep. What, what does it say? So, multiple Borg missiles is the answer to Wayne Verrill, no? Well, I mean for why you'd want to run it. Oh, as in why you'd want to run double sphere, double missile. Oh. Uh, the, the, I, think, I think that's what they're saying. The other reason is that it completely solves Voyager. I mean, Voyager rolls to one Borg ship with a Borg missile. If it has two, it just cries. Mm -hmm. the, super, the super action stacking, flagship Picard, something else. Yeah. Yeah, Super uh, Dreadnought Voyager, Super Voyager, whatever you want to call it. It just rolls. Mm -hmm. And rolls badly. Yeah, because I didn't put Missile on my bill because I didn't feel I needed it. Because I had also, I had other answers to weigh in and barrel. And my answer is usually Croesus. And there's very few things that stop Croesus. Good maneuvering is one of them, but you know what? You're not going to outmaneuver. You're not going to outmaneuver Will Sanchez. So <laughs> the biggest pro, the biggest thing that could have stopped me would have probably been the uh, the big cube, which could have used fake messages to hurt my action or hurt my maneuvering ability. But that's why I included my own fake messages so that they could never. So that no one would ever be able to get in range to steal my own Croesus. It's 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 all about it's all about getting as much crew as I can and protecting them from all the different ways I could think of losing them. Hmm, that seems logical, Captain. <laughs> and if they happen to have other, you know, neat uses too. I mean, the fact that Martok was usually far away from the action actually made fake messages easier to use. I thought it was clever, but I still ended up using it only in like one game. Hmm. These things work. But yeah, mm -hmm. so that was the Chicago Illinois Regional. You know, it was a pretty laid it was a pretty laid back venue, I think, for the most part. Uh, the first two rounds, I ended up fighting a. Uh, let's see, what is this? Let's see if I can see it. Oh, uh, someone brought a battle cruiser with multiple volleys of torpedoes. That was pretty neat, but uh, he targeted my cube first. He only had two volleys, so he could volley my cube, oh. which I negated, volley a second ship, but or but then I was my cube, my sphere was actually too close for him to use his regular torpedoes. Oh, <laughs> oh, so brutal. He was running though, with Union Barrel also, so I stole his barrel and I had barrel twins. Ah. Uh, let's see. Second round, I actually fought a Picard Super Valdor. What? It was a Super Valdor. You fought a what? It had Picard, Shelby, Paris, Flagship. What? Why in... <laughs> what? Hey, hey. There were a lot of locals here. They just came to have fun, so... There I will, is no I will not, realm uh, in which I will not the judge Valdor... Them too no, no. There's no realm in which the Valdor is playable in the current tournament meta. None. At all. Hey, you made it to second round, though. How? It, once you cloak with. it, it seems like it would be really hard to actually hit it with Shelby, Paris, Cloak, the two natural defense, a flagship for three. Sure, unless you're running Borg Missile. <laughs> oh, I agree. Or it's still, It'd still be hard to hit while it was cloaked. But if it ever fired, yeah, then you would start shoot killing it. And then you can cancel its attacks, and it's running a cloak ship in meteor shower. 
does have six hull though. Uh, those and are, it has six hull and two natural defense dice, so that wasn't it wasn't it wasn't as big a risk as other ships. Sure, but I mean, what if one of those what if what if a crit slips through and it's a warp core breach? What do you do then? Well, then you lose in the in the finals, and then you cry. <sighs> sorry, it's sorry, not, San Diego. Look, look, let me put it this way: Why would you ever run a Valdor over a Voyager in this position? I actually like Valdor a little bit better than Voyager because it can turn around, but that may, that's probably just me. Uh, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the, the way, oh, he got a tech on it. Has... He also got a tech on it and for a feedback pulse. I can Voyager's see it. attack. I can see it over there. Hmm. And Oh, and he had the advanced cloaking. That was helpful. But yeah, uh, let's see. What have I missed in the chat? Uh, why didn't I use costs? Uh, again, I didn't think I needed. I didn't think he would protect me from what I feared most. Um, I was a little more vulnerable to Admiral Kirk and uh, maybe Klingon boarding party. But the big thing that I was most worried about was Krosis, and Krosis bypasses costs like it's like a hot knife through butter or some other suitably appropriate simile. Yeah, I and I mean. With the amount of disable, uh, I mean, you had Lee Nollis, you had Goval. You know, mm -hmm. worst comes to worst, uh, you didn't have Lee Nollis, did you? you I did. did. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, worst comes to worst, Admiral Kirk comes along. Ho ho, Beryl is disabled. No, one of the like five million ways I have of stopping that from happening. You know, it, I, I could shuffle disable the tokens around easily enough for the most part. And, uh, I had Romulan pilot in case I needed to cover long distance really quickly, which I never actually really ended up needing, but mm -hmm. it was there. Uh, let's see. So you can use them, though, if you get Borg missiled. Um, what are we talking about? Are we just talking about my negation? Yeah, if, even if I get Borg missiled, I still have at least two or three, uh, two or three negations in me before I need to start taking actions again. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Extra four dice from Cloak. Yeah, that was just talking about the Valdor. The Valdor, the Valdor has its neat points, but it's still it's still a tier two ship for the most part. Yeah, the S the extra dice from Cloak are just not worth what you're paying. I mean, it's nice to have the reroll and battle stations on it. That can give you a really nice deal of avoidance. But Voyager can do the same thing without having to be cloaked. I do like. I do like he did u make judicious use of sensor echo though, and that that would have been magnificent against any fleet that was not 360 arced. Which don't really exist right now. <laughs> yeah. But still good. <laughs> Alright then. So anything else to wrap up our uh, Chicago regional one? We're just getting uh, we, we, we talked about that for quite a bit. Any other questions or anything? I managed to walk away with a nice large cube. It's gorgeous. It's actually pretty darn heavy, too. Can you can you open it easily? Is that uh, a thing you not, can do? I did not try. Uh, since I could not fit it in my luggage uh, before I left for the day, I left it with them for them to ship it to me. I see. So uh, I have not had a chance to tinker with it yet. The, the reason I ask um, is uh, people have been saying, like, hey, storage solution. And I'm like, well, that's literally the only thing I would want this for at this point. Because I am skeptical those cards will ever materialize. Mm -hmm. So That's why I was thinking. I thought of, and there were probably some cool things that you could do with, like, some kind of handle where the, uh, where the mounting pegs are supposed to go in. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, just the cube itself is pretty darn heavy. I'm not sure I want to... I'm not sure I want to lug that thing around with more stuff inside it. I mean, it's probably a good five or ten pounds. Maybe I'm exaggerating it. I don't, I'm not good at measuring things, estimating things like that. Hey, Tucker, you can always put lights inside of it and make it a nice night light. <laughs> nah, you could put it a blindfold. Put lights inside it. You could put it over a lamp as a lampshade, man. <laughs> Oh, that that would be interesting. <laughs> that's 
Definitely what I look for in stall prices is lampshades. Mmm, a lampshade, a Borg lampshade trophy. I, yeah, that sounds great. Let me drive 200 miles to Chicago, or uh, Colorado. Yay! Yeah, it okay. turns out, by the way, it's going to be a damn close thing about me getting the new car and making it up to uh, Colorado. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. I want, I want to see you there. I want to see you with a trophy. Yeah, or, I'm, I'm hoping. Um, or at least a Colorado, few, at least a cloak ship pack. Uh, well, here's the thing, Colorado. I, I expect. I mean, I'm hoping at least a cloak ship pack, simply because um, this one's capped at 32. But Colorado scares me a little bit. I'm going to be straight with you. Um, if you pay attention on Board Game Geek, it does seem like the two sort of nexi of Attack Wing are SoCal and Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and someone SoCal, was posting. Someone was posting a review of like Colorado gaming stores, and there were like yeah. five of them. Right, and the thing is, SoCal. I mean, easily out of every single regionals we've seen, SoCal, San Diego, easily had the most advanced meta. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were they were playing with. I mean, with all due respect to you and Chicago and Portland and Austin, they were playing with technology that nobody there at those events would seem to be considering. Mm -hmm. so, so you're fearing a stronger metagame? I am fearing a much stronger metagame. Um, and yeah. I'm also rusty. I haven't, frankly, um, between college and the fact that there isn't a store within 60 miles of me, and the only one that does uh, has put it on hold until November, I haven't played in a while either. I'm rusty, you know? So. Gotcha. Got to try to get. Got to try to dust some of that off with maybe some of the side events beforehand. Hopefully. I, and but the, but then the flip side is I'm driving from Santa Fe, New Mexico to get there. I might not be able to go to any of the side events. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, there is going to be a side event after the uh, Swiss though. So if I completely bomb out, I might be able to salvage something. Mm -hmm. We'll see. David, we'll see. were you going to say something about side events earlier? Uh, well, we're starting to run out of time, so I'll, I'll talk to you off air about them. They're, they're nothing we need to talk about on No, here. we got, I mean, look, we're, we're, I, I'm guessing we're not going to do a, pu a preview of the Queen's Cube, Diamond, um, Akata Hedron, whatever, in 10 minutes. So I figure we mm. could probably just wrap up the show talking about regionals. That'd be my thought. Because yeah. I have, I have to uh, go, like. Long story short, the next wave is awesome. Get like 17 Enterprise E's and 32 Borg Queen Cubes. I do not think that is necessary at all. Okay, maybe one or two of each. Yeah. But definitely the at least Valjean. one. The Valjean is neat. The Valjean is neat, but if you want to be murdering things, especially if, you're, if your venues are considering faction or, uh, or fleet purity, you definitely need these ships. The power, yeah, creep, fleet... the power creep is strong with these ones. Yeah, um... I mean, the E especially, if you're if you're shop playing Faction Pure, or Fleet Pure, I should say, um, the E is one you're going to want multiples of for uh, Dorsal Phaser Bank. Yeah, uh, Dorsal Phaser Ray, Riker. Beverly, Crush, the Beverly Crusher is really good, too. Yeah, yeah Beverly Crusher is Lee Nollis for people who didn't win OP6. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, and E has a lot of good stuff on it. The Queen's, the Queen's Diamond. Uh, the, I'm calling it the Diamond because nobody in their god, nobody in the fandom has ever called the Queen's ship an octahedron. Ever. <laughs> yeah, it's always ever. been the Diamond. It's always been the Diamond. It's been it was, it was the Diamond in my first foray into Star Trek gaming, Star Trek Armada, way back in like 2001 or whenever it came out. Yeah, it was the Borg Queen's Diamond. Yeah, same thing in the old CCG that the Cipher did. It was it was the Queen's Diamond. So, but yeah, the the those two ships enhance the two factions that we're seeing the most play in regionals. Actually, really, the only factions we're seeing in the top four. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, and the only faction besides Klingons we're seeing at all. Right. I mean, I am, I, by the way, for one, and then thrilled by the resurgence of Klingons, but I just don't think they're good enough to win an event. Mm -hmm. 
I do feel that after now that we're past the, once we get past the uh, the regional uh, set restrictions, I feel like Mirror Universe is going to start making a good showing as well, though. Um, I don't think they're at the power level of Fed and Borg. I just don't. Not quite yet, but I think they're I think they're still better off than like Vulcans, even though the Vulcans have had a lot more releases. Um, yeah, the, I mean, well, the Vulcans. I mean, if I had to start ranking factions, I would go Borg, I'm writing this out, Fed, Klingons, I'd still probably put Dominion after that. Um, then I'd probably go Near Universe, Romulans, Vulcans, and then everybody else. I'm not really including Independent. They'd probably go, I don't know where they'd go. Yeah, they have a lot of weird decisions. Yeah, between between the Sung and the Maquis Raiders and the Gorn Raiders, I mean, they're about as wide a variety as you can get. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, independent. I think they've done a really one thing. I will say for the WizKids design team, I don't have many good words for them these days, but one thing I will say is they have done a really good job of making independence feel like something you want to splash for. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rephrase that, not using magic terminology. There's something you want to sprinkle across a wide variety of fleets of other factions. <laughs> now, if only Bohika were independent. Um, if only, uh, if only Seska didn't make you disable another upgrade. Mm. There is that. Yeah, so our next episode will probably be looking at all of the new ships, the Enterprise-E, the Borg Diamond, Queen, Vessel, Octahedron thing. Okada Hedron will. Okada, Okada Hedron. It's funny. So I, I finally got a chance to look at some while I was up at the regional. I'm flipping over the flipping over the movement dial. Octahedron, 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 octahedron. We all had a good laugh. It says different things on different sides of the movement dial. Yes. <laughs> some intern's going to get fired. I'm sure. That, that sound is our collective face palming. I literally just did a face palm. Yeah. Well, we would be so able to see it if you had some video, sir. I don't like doing that. It reminds me too much of my job. Ah. Uh, well, before I, we will we will change your 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 Skype icon to the Picard face palm maneuver. Uh. Okay. Before before anybody makes any really bad assumptions, um, I tutor over the web. Um. But, uh, yeah, no, what I really wish there was was, like, a way I could just change my icon by pushing buttons and, like, have a variety of icons ready for various reactions. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like emoticons, but better. Yeah, I could have face palm and double face palm and Y to F, you know. We need to figure a way to set, to set that up. That'd be hilarious. Did somebody just drop their mic in a in a bottle of water? Sorry, that was that was my water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Ugh. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other news coming out in the last week that I shouldn't have forgotten but probably did? Uh, OP one's still coming up. We did some strategy on that beforehand. Mm-hmm. These ships will probably play a big part in that, so definitely get your hands on them before that if you can. Did we uh, did we mention the um, the um, the the simplified rules last week for OP two? I think we mentioned I think them. I don't know if we went over them, but uh, whatever. There's if you go on to is it WizKids Facebook or I think it's on their main page. On their main page. There are simplified rules for OP2, which is the one where you're supposed to bring two fleets. Um, I'm not sure it was really necessary, and I think it just makes things more confusing because you can't really apply them very well. What do you mean? Well, it's like you take one fleet to the event, and when you're playing the Borg side, all your Borg upgrades cost one less. When you're playing the Rebel side, all of your Rebel, all of your non-Borg upgrades cost one less. Oh, yeah. No, that's stupid. Um, the other one is you just dice off every round to determine whether you're playing uh, Borg or non-Borg, and I think that's also stupid. Mm -hmm. But yeah, OP2, 
build two fleets, make them fun. Being the Borg side is going to be great, a great deal, and you can assimilate everything because everyone gets an assimilation slot. I mean, a Borg slot. Should be an assimilation slot. But yeah, uh, let's see. New things coming up. Um, not really Star Trek related, but the D&D Attack Wing is coming out later this month, I believe. Uh, I got to play the demo of it a little bit because between our two-person side events for the uh, for Star Trek, uh, we had a, we got a couple games in, and I mean the game is shaping up pretty nice for now. Hopefully, it doesn't you know drown in its own power creep like uh, like Star Trek. It seems to be uh, doing just a little bit. I'd play it. I probably won't be. I probably won't put too much money into it though. And dragons. I mean, I want my fire dragon to spit fire at the Enterprise D. Hmm. Yeah, the one the one thing I've, I I watched a Dice Tower playthrough of it. They have upgrade cards with a timer mechanism. Yes, that is very nice. I wish we had that in Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. And you know what the reality is? It wouldn't be that hard to incorporate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't do it on anything that already exists. Yeah. But, because they, I think they took out disabled and that's their kind of replacement. No, there, there is still disabled. It's just okay. the, ti the timer ones are like disabled that goes away by itself eventually. Right. Hmm. So, that's so something's neat. disabled for like three rounds or four rounds. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what whatever. people have been suggesting for variants on torpedoes, you know. They take a little bit of time to reload and that's and that's how it works. Yeah. So that could be a neat thing. Uh, let's see. Anything else that was neat about it? Besides, well, dragons. Oh, uh, you don't have to fly off the edge of the board. If you hit the edge of the board, you can just stop. Oh. <laughs> uh, Not that you see a whole lot of flying off the board these days, but it does happen. True, and most of it, and and but when it does, it's usually because your opponent did something to make you do a maneuver. I I sent a cube off the edge of the board with fake messages during one of the side events. Nice. He he, he played it a little too risky, and I forgot I actually had fake messages until that moment. <laughs> awesome. It was glorious, especially because he beat me in the game before that. So then we went one and one. But yeah, uh, fun things, fun times. Mm, yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Next month we're getting more things as well as the retail version of DS9 and the Cube. So I guess we're looking forward to that. See see when those previews start coming out. Oh, probably two, three more weeks. Yeah. They, they tend to just bunch the last... the, the, the now that they're three ships, they tend to bunch them over like maybe two weeks before stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which isn't a problem. I mean, I want to enjoy what just came out. It, it, it's Be, be it's content with your queen, darn it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But yeah, you know, we've. I do think the release schedule is a little hectic. I mean, it's hard. It's... I've been gone for I've only been gone for like a week and I already feel like I'm way behind. Especially because new things just got released. Yeah, well, fortunately, I guess if we didn't do it this week, we can just do a week of previews next week or something like that and we'll be caught up on previews because there's no regionals next week either. Correct. Nice. That'll be a nice little break. I have some chance to get some get some better pictures and all that good stuff. Yeah. Sorry we didn't get to them today. They exist, we promise. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I was pretty content walking away with a bunch of prizes, my own finally getting a cloak ship pack, picking up a couple extra DS9 packs for my buddies down here. And uh, I ended up pulling four of the five uh, different RIF boosters, so. Nice. Which one did yeah. you miss? Ironically, the one I missed was the Borg. Of course uh it was. 
I saw that one coming from a mile away. I know, a right? A mile you, away. You don't get dispersion field, you... Yeah, you'll just buy it online like the rest of us. And or just get it in his first resistance is futile. Okay. No, he'll need it. He'll need it for his first resistance is futile. Okay. I'm I'm patient and I'm going. I'm starting being a TO at one of the three venues down here, so I'll probably just pull one out of a pack. That's a no no, Will. Oh, like we're gonna get ten people after they change the day on it. <laughs> yeah yeah all right. all right then um i guess we're gonna wrap it up there uh david any shout outs closing comments cool things how's life yeah um life's okay no i i'm a big san francisco giants fan so uh baseball's alive and well in this oh, area hell with you <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> without without uh, detouring too far, yeah, it's you know, I, I'm looking forward to Star Trek. I'm finally running Collective Op One at my local store here next Wednesday, so chance to replay, assimilate all things. Now, or now with now with have enter things assimilated, and now with Enterprise E Super Action. Yes. Cool. So. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be fun kind of getting some of the new ships involved in that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Tucker, any shout-outs, any cool things, any any cool things going in life that you want to share? Um, I'm really excited about the new car I'm getting. Um, Honda, if for some reason you're listening to this, please bring back the element. We all miss it, and I spent two weeks looking for one. <laughs> Nice. Also, oh. go Red Sox. Go <laughs> Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before before you two have to end up coming to blows, or uh, or some kind of Ferengi trade deal. I guess that's going to do it for today. Um, or I could say my shot. My shout outs are going to go back to you know all the guys I met up at Chicago Regionals. Uh, Chicagoland Dice Dojo, pretty cool place. Uh, even though it was filled mostly with Herokix players over the weekend, there was still some there's there's some good workers there and some good for, some good people. So, pleasure meeting you all. Glad I got to play you guys, and hope I can, hope I can uh, play with you guys again sometime soon. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. That's going to do it for this episode of State of the Federation. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something useful and. If you're going to the next regionals, uh, I will be over down in North Carolina. Tucker's heading up to the Colorado one. And maybe we will see some of you guys there. Sound good to you guys? Yep. That's great. Excellent. All right. Take care, everyone. And while you're playing, may Q be generous with your dice. Have a good night. Space, the final frontier. This is the podcast State of the Federation. Its continuing mission. To preview strange new ships. To seek out new builds and new combinations. To boldly go where no show has gone before. <laughs>